This is how to loom knit a giraffe. This is an intermediate pattern. This is what the giraffe looks like. You'll be working with two different kinds of looms, a 12 peg and a 24 peg, but mostly the 24 peg for the head and the body. You'll be working with techniques like an internal decrease and working things like a sock heel and that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the head and you're going to need your 24 peg loom and you want to draw a string cast on with your yellow yarn 24 pegs and I'm using a super bulky number 6 yarn and if you're getting this kind of burn it um, baby yellow. You'll want to get two skeins of these to complete this project. It'll take about one and a half, but you'll definitely need two skeins of the yellow if you're going for this. In fact, if you're going for any bulky yarn like this, you'll definitely need to get two skeins of yellow. You'll only need one skein of the tan or medium brown and bulky size yarn. Okay, now from here we're going to ear up 24 pegs for 9 rows. And we're going to go from the back of the head to the front of the nose. So we're working the back of the head right now. So go ahead and ear up 24 pegs. And we're working flat. will be our first row of the e wrap. Okay, at this point you want to continue to e-wrap for 8 more rows and go ahead and pause the video to complete your rows. This is what it should look like completed, the 9 rows. Now we're going to start a difficult row and this is going to be where we're going to be doing the ears. So what you want to do is you want to e-wrap the first four pegs. And then the next four pegs, you'll be working your ear. And then you'll be working two horns after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to work the next four pegs flat. To work our ear. So go ahead and ear wrap four pegs for two rows. And then you're going to increase one by wrapping the next peg over and then ear wrap four pegs. But on that increase peg, do not toss that bottom loop over. You're going to increase again, wrapping the next peg over, and then you're going to e-wrap five pegs. At this point, you tossed your first increase over, but don't touch that bottom loop. Reason being is you'll attach the middle of the ear to the base of the head. You don't want that. Now we want to e-wrap six pegs, for four rows, making sure not to toss that loop over on the increased pegs. We don't want to connect the middle of our ear to the base of our head. 
So there's two. Here's three. Four. Now at this point we're fixing to work the middle four pegs again. We're just not going to do anything with those increased pegs for now. So start working the middle four again and you're going to e-wrap four pegs for three rows. So there's one, two, And three. Now we're going to work the two pegs in between to do the tip of the ear. And we're going to ear up those two pegs for two rows. So there's one, two. And you want to think of it kind of like a pyramid. We're at the tip of the ear at this point. We're, we're at the point. Now you're going to go back to four for three rows. So we're now starting on the other side of the ear. There's two. And there's three. Now we're going to go back to our increase pegs and we're going to do six pegs for four rows. Remembering not to toss over those original loops so that we don't include the middle of the ear with the base of the head. So there's row one. And here's row two. Row three, and row four. Now we want to get rid of those increased pegs, so we're going to decrease those end loops and do the original four and then we're going to wrap four pegs for five rows so there's row one there's row two row three and row four and one last row and we'll complete at the ear in row five. Okay, we have just completed the ear. Next, we're going to e wrap one and start working on the horn section. So there's your ear. And you see it has a fatter section in the middle. Okay, we're going to e wrap one peg. And then the next three pegs will be working the horn. So go ahead and e wrap three pegs for four rows. So there's row one, row two, row three. and row four. Now we want to change our colors into the tan color and this is the Lions brand suede I think they call it coffee 
color and I only needed one skein of this and it's really soft and fluffy and it's also a super bulky and we're going to change colors and you don't have to cut the yellow off because you're going to go back to it so go ahead and change color and we're going to do the tips of little horns and so you want to e-wrap three pegs for four rows. So there's row one, and there's row two, and there's row three, and row four. Okay, at this point, we're going to pick back up our yellow and we're going to e-wrap three pegs for five rows and go ahead and snip your tan off because you won't need it at this point anymore so go ahead and e-wrap the three pegs for five rows in the yellow and then there's three and five and there is your horn and that is completed and the next three pegs you're going to complete your other horn just like you just did and you're going to e-wrap one peg and then complete another ear in the next four pegs like we did previously. So the next 12 pegs you're basically going to be reversing what we just did. So go ahead and complete another horn, then e-wrap one, then complete another ear, and then e-wrap to your starting point. And you want to go ahead and you want to pause the video and complete your other horn and ear in the row. Okay. Just remember you're reversing the first 12 pegs. Horn, ear, and remember repeat your ear from over here, right there, and then finish your row out with ear wraps. After you're done, you should have two ears and two horns as you can see here okay from here we're going to work the front of the face and you're going to e-wrap 24 pegs for six rows Now if you are wanting to use a smaller size yarn in the 4 range, the worsted, you'll want to use either 3 strands or go about researching how to double e-wrap so that you can stuff it firmer. Um, those are just suggestions. I would suggest increasing the number of strands to 3 or 4 strands to do this project. Go ahead and pause the video and complete five more rows. Now you're going to go and do an internal decrease from 24 pegs to 12 pegs. And the first thing you're going to do is go in and decrease every other peg. Now there's a multitude of ways you can go about doing this. You can lift off 11 and place 2 on 6 pegs on each side and do it that way. You're just trying to get it decreased down to 
12 pegs. And what we're doing is we're creating an indention where the snout is. And this gives the giraffe a lot of character. Now, after you've decreased every other peg, go in and erap the pegs that only have the loops on them, which should be about every other peg. I find that doing it this way is just the easiest way to show you how to go about doing an internal decrease. It's where you decrease every single loop in the pattern in one row. Okay, at this point you're going to bring all your pegs side by side together. And this is kind of how I do one half of it. Putting the loops temporarily onto my hook and placing them on the pegs. And you want to repeat the same thing on the other side, bringing all those loops side by side. Okay, at this point, this step is actually very important. You want to tighten your loops. You want to go from the opposite end where your working strand is, and you want to tighten those loops. And the reason being is by tightening those loops, you are making a very distinct indention where the face ends and the snout begins. And so this step is really important to make sure that you go in and you tighten your loops up. Okay, at this point we are down to the snout, so we have the face. Now we're going to do the snout, and you're going to erupt 12 pegs for 5 rows. And so here's row 1. Pause the video to complete four more rows. At this point, you're going to change color to complete the nose of the giraffe. So you're going to change to the tan color so that you can complete the nose. Okay, now you want to erap 12 pegs. And now we're going to add some nostrils. So what you want to do is you want to erap three, and erap two for three rows, then erap two. So 
go ahead and erase three. Then ERAP 2 for 3 rows. This is your first nostril. So there's 1, 2, and 3. Now you want to ERAP 2 to create space in between the nostrils. And then you want to ERAP 2 for three rows to complete your second nostril. So there's one, two, three, and then you wrap three pegs to complete the row. At this point, you want to wrap 12 pegs for three rows. So here's row one. And then row two. And row three. At this point, you want to draw a string cast off. And that'll be the tip of the nose, and you want to close it off. And you'll want to fill up the snout area. So go ahead and draw a string cast off. Okay, at this point, go ahead and draw strings of now end together. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill up the tan part and then um, close at the back of the head. And I'll tell you why. Go ahead and fill up the tan area of your snout. Because this is expensive yarn, I do try to conserve it as best I can. So you'll find I tend to use a lot of the tails to sew things in. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. And then I'm going to go ahead and close off the back of the head, but I am going to finish the snout. And the reason I'm doing this is it's not going to take anything to close the back of the head when drawstringing the original cast on together. I'll have this huge tail that I can use to finish sewing up the snout. And that's my reason for doing that. So. Go ahead and close up the back of the head. Snip 
your end. And now you want to go back to sewing up your the rest of your snout. And I found that's where I used the extra tail on the back of the head to finish sewing it up. And if I have anything extra, I'm going to use it to sew up my ears or my and my horns to conserve the yarn. Now I'll turn this inside out to complete the snout area, and you'll want to keep it turned inside out to sew up the. ears and the horns. And if you need a guide as to how to go about sewing up the ears and the horns, this works exactly like my dragon in um, another video. So just go down and sew the edges of the horns and the ears together and then you'll want to flip it right side out and stuff. Next we're going to work on the body. I'm going to be working with our 24 peg loom again. And we're going to start off working circularly. So go ahead and draw a string cast on 24 pegs to start working circularly. And what we're going to do is we're going to work from the bottom area all the way to the neck tip. So this is going to be the bottom where you're going to work on sewing the tail and the back legs on and we're going to work from back to the top of the neck. Okay, at this point you're going to erupt 24 pegs for a total of 5 rows. Okay, go ahead and pause the video to complete four more rows. After this, you're going to purl 24 pegs. And this purled row is going to be very beneficial. It also turns the actual bottom away it actually creates an angle as well as gives you a guideline to where to sew on your tail and your back legs so this this actual row is helpful and important let's go ahead and purl the 24 what we just did. So when you draw a string at the bottom together, you're starting cast on, there is the back. Your bottom is done. Now we're fixing to start on the main body. 
So you're going to e-wrap, go back to e-wrapping, and you're going to e-wrap for a total of 10 rows. So this is going to be row 1. Go ahead and pause the video to complete nine more rows. And then we'll be starting the kind of base of the neck area. So go ahead and pause the video. Now we're fixing to start working the we're fixing to start working flat. And this means that we're also fixing to work a heel area, which is going to be the base of the neck where the body and the neck are going to start curving up. So go ahead and decrease by one on each end and then e-wrap all the pegs with loops on them. And while, yes, you will have to sew up your neck area, the seam will be hidden because you'll be putting spots down the spine. But now, because we want our seam hidden, we're going to make sure that we do our heel technique in the front part rather than near our separation. So go ahead and e-wrap 17 pegs and then you'll stop. Okay, and what you're going to do now is you're going to wrap and turn the next peg, and then you're going to e wrap 12 pegs. Okay, so you're going to wrap and turn the next peg, and then you're going to e-wrap 11, basically stopping just before the wrap and turn. There you go. Now go ahead and toss all the bottom loops over. your wrap and turn. Okay, so go ahead and wrap and turn the next peg and then you're going to e-wrap 10 pegs. And this will stop you just before your last wrap and turn. You 
should have two wrap and turns on one end. And you're fixing to create your second wrap and turn on the next peg. And you're going to e-wrap nine pegs, stopping just before the last wrap and turn. Go ahead and toss the bottom loops over. Wrap and turn with the next peg and e-wrap eight pegs, stopping just before the last wrap and turn. Toss your bottom loops over. Now you're going to wrap and turn the next peg, and you're going to e wrap seven pegs, stopping just before the last wrap and turn, tossing all your bottom loops over. to wrap and turn and you're going to e-wrap six pegs. You're going to wrap and turn one more time and e-wrap six pegs. Now you're going to e-wrap seven pegs, including your first wrap and turn. Now you're going to e-wrap eight pegs, including the next wrap and turn. Now you're going to e-wrap nine pegs and you include the next wrap and turn. E-wrap ten pegs and include the next wrap and turn. E-wrap eleven pegs and include the next wrap and turn. E wrap twelve pegs and include the next wrap and turn. And then you're going to e-wrap 13 pegs and include the last wrap and turn on this side. Now yes, you do have one more wrap and turn peg left. But at this point, we're going to e-wrap all the way back to our starting point. But you can see this beautiful angle that we've just completed. So go ahead and e-wrap 17 pegs back to your starting point. 
you've just created a nice angle to create the neck going straight up and we're going to intensify it even more here in just a second Now what we want to do is we want to decrease by three pegs on each end. So what you'll do is you'll lift up five pegs and place two loops on each of the last three pegs. And you're going to do this on each side. And what this is going to do, kind of like our snout area that we did with that internal decrease, it's going to increase an exaggeration on the back of the neck when we go to sew up so that it will stand up straight. Go ahead and lift up five pegs and place two loops on your last three pegs. So we've just created a nice angle at the base of the body and at the back top of the body we are creating a cinched area so that our neck when we sew it up is going to stand straight up on its own without much effort. This yarn can be a little slick so sometimes placing the loops back on can be a little fun. Normally it doesn't give me this hard of a time, but it just happened to this time. Okay, you've now got 16 pegs, and what you're going to do is you're going to e-wrap those 16 pegs. At this point, we're going to be completely working the long neck area. Okay, at this point you want to e-wrap 16 pegs for 15 rows. Go ahead and pause the video to complete 14 more rows, and then we'll be ready to do our cast off. So keep going. Now that you've done that, you're ready to cast off, and you can see that beautiful neck area where it's angled right. Go ahead and cast off. You don't have to do the cast off this way. You can do it whatever way you feel more comfortable with. This is just how I like to do it. I've done the cast off in other ways and I just prefer it this way. But whatever way you're comfortable with a regular cast off, go ahead and do that.
and you want to cut you a long tail so that you can sew up the neck area. Pull that tail through. Okay, at this point, go ahead and sew down the neck area and close that off. And then you want to close the bottom off just like you did the back of the head and stuff. At this point, we're going to start working on the legs. And you're going to draw a string cast on using the tan first. And we're going to work with the hoof area of the giraffe fur leg first and then work our way up. So go ahead and draw a string cast on 12 pegs. If you do not have a flower loom, you can use, you can work this flat. But instead of working 12 pegs, you're going to want to work 14 pegs, and then you're going to want to sew up the side, but I would still suggest drawstringing the cast on. Okay, so go ahead and e-wrap 12 pegs for three rows. And we're going to speed this up. And then there's row three. Okay, at this point, you can release your starting point, and then you want to change back to the yellow, and then you're going to want to e wrap the 12 pegs for 12, 12 rows. And you see that when you close that off, that's the tip of your leg. So go ahead and change color. And you're going to do this a total of four times. My original design that I did, my initial draft for this, I did a different leg, but I found that it didn't work as smoothly as I like. And so my goal with these patterns is to simplify the pattern as much as possible. And I found that repeating the same leg for all four legs was the best choice. So go ahead and wrap 12 pegs for 12 rows with the yellow. Now you want to pause the video and complete 11 more rows, and then we'll be ready to cast off. Now we're ready to cast off. So again, you can cast off whatever way that you prefer. This is just my preferred cast off. Again, you want to make four legs. Go 
go ahead and close off the bottom like you did the body and then you want to stuff them and make four of them. Cut you a nice tail so that you can sew it onto your body easily. Next we're going to work on our spots. Now originally I had actually knitted in the spots on my original draft but that was really complicated and I didn't feel that, that was necessary. This makes it very easy. So go ahead and e-wrap, cast on five pegs, and then you want to e-wrap five pegs for five rows. And you're going to create a square or a patch. And you're going to want to make six of these. So go ahead and then after you do your five rows, go ahead and cast off and you'll make six spots total. Again, this is my choice to making the spots for the draft a lot easier than trying to actually knit the color into the body. You'll want to cut you a longer tail so that you can sew the patch on to the body easier. So go ahead and make five more. Next we're going to work on the tail and we're going to be starting from the tip and working to the base. So go ahead and start off with your tan and you want to draw a string cast on eight pegs. Then you'll want to e-wrap Excuse me, you want to draw a string cast on seven pegs, and then you'll want to e wrap those seven pegs for four total rows. So this is going to be row one. And there's row two. And row three. And row four. At this point, you want to decrease by one on each end. And this creates our hair section that you see on a giraffe. Now you want to change colors and go back to the yellow. And then we're going to work the base of the tail. So we basically just completed the hair tip of the tail. Now go ahead and e-wrap all, all five pegs. You'll want to e wrap five pegs for 15 rows. So here's our first row. Go ahead and pause the video and complete 14 more rows. And we'll be ready to cast off. Once that's completed, go ahead and cast off your loops and then you want to sew up your tail. You don't have to, but it does complete the round look of the tail when you sew it up. But it will naturally roll up if you choose not to. And 
you'll want to cut you a long tail so that you'll be able to actually sew up the tailed area. And as you can see, it rolls up on its own, but I would suggest actually sewing down and actually closing off the bottom. Next, we're going to work on the main area, the hair that goes down the spine. This is optional. You don't have to add this area if you don't want to. Go ahead and e-wrap cast on five pegs, and then you want to e-wrap five, and then you want to purl five. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a ridge ribbed area. So now you want to purl five. And we're going to continue doing this E wrap five, purl five to create a ridged area that looks like hair that would be on a giraffe's spine. Again, this section is optional. You can choose to add it or not. So go ahead and continue for a total of 20 rows, e-wrapping 5 and purling 5. And you want a total of 20 rows. So go ahead and pause the video to complete the rows and go ahead and cast off in your preferred way. And you should have a ribbon. Now that we have all our elements, we're going to assemble our giraffe. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew on the head. And we're going to line the back of the head up at the back of the body and the front of the head with the front of the body. And at this point, it gets harder to film the assembly, so you're basically going to get a general idea of how to go about sewing things together. But I always find sewing on the head first gives you a real guide as to how to go about sewing on the rest of the body on all the limbs and everything like that. So go ahead and sew your head onto your body, making sure that the back center lines up with your seam on your neck. That's the back. And then you want to go ahead and sew the head on. There's your head sewn on. Go ahead and tie off the back, and then you'll take the crochet hook and you'll tuck the ends into the stuffed animal. I love how easy the uh, ends are to hide with stuffed animals. Next we want to sew on our front legs and we're going to line up, you're going to go down the center and you're going to line it up with that wrap turn area that you did and that's a great way to keep up with where you're going to line up your legs and I like to flatten the ends so that they move easily. But if you want them to be, the legs to be stiffer, you can sew them open, but I like to sew mine flat to allow for extra movement. So go ahead and sew the front legs on, lining up with the wrap and turn area, and then close off the seam and tuck your ends with your crochet hook.
Okay, next you'll want to repeat the same thing on the other side. And then you'll want to sew on your back legs. And when sewing on the back legs, you'll want to sew them on the purled line. But how you want to line them up is with the front legs. And I'll show you how that goes. About. Again, I sew my legs in flat. So what you want to do, as you can see, I'm lining it up with the outer edge of the front legs and I'm going to sew on the purled line. That makes sure that the purled line keeps it even and you don't have it cockeyed kind of, which is the reason why I like doing the purled line. It makes just sewing things on so much easier as a guide. And you want to go ahead and tuck your end. Again, I apologize for having a hard time being able to film where you can see it. So you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So when sewing up, just repeat what you just did with the front and back leg on the other side. So at this point, we're going to sew on our tail and we're going to line it up right down the back, right down the middle. And then you're going to sew it on. I'm going to sew it on flat, just like I did the legs, so that it has easy mobility. Then I'm going to tie off tuck the ends with a crochet hook. And at this point our giraffe should be looking very much like a giraffe. It's fixing the needed spot. And we're fixing to do that. Okay, at this point I'm going to tell you how to line your spots up. Your first spot is in a diamond angle and it's going to be at the top of the head. And there should be three that line down the front. So there's one, two, and a third one at the very base of the neck connecting to the body. So one on the head, two on the neck, and then you've got one more lined up with the neck ones, and then you put two on either side. This is what they should look like sewn on. You can leave your giraffe like this and go ahead and glue on your eye. If you chose not to do the mane, but if you're going to sew the mane, just starting at the top back of the head and I usually start right where the top of that spot is and sew it right down the spine. And that way your giraffe has a mane and to sew the and to sew or hot glue on your eyes, go to the base of the snout and line it up between the ears and the horns. And then you're done. This is what your giraffe should look like.